that whatever the negative is of all that expenditure of energy, it's offset by the thrill of getting a win in that situation? Well, oh, it's even. Right at the end of the day, both teams spent what they had. To, I mean, that's, that's a huge cost for both teams. Um, and then it's a race to recover now. Certainly, you get the win and, and you get, you, we, we, we get a different night. But tomorrow's will be the same that we, we had planned, right? That, that won't change and then the puck drops and then the opportunity to grab momentum will be up for grabs. Paul, when you're talking to Barky about just the marathon of this game, his response was that you guys had a really tough training camp and we've talked about camp a lot this year. What does it mean to be here now in the East Coast Promise Final and guys are still talking about how much they got out of that camp for you? Yeah, it was a tough camp. Um, <laughs> So you build belief a bunch of different ways. And one of them is, you know, they survived those five days. They were five unkind days. And, uh, and they carry it with them, you know. We've, we've got a, a team just that I would assume completely like Carolina with Roddy at the home there. Um, that it, and we have a team performance group. We have um, a team that's in the weight room that trains hard, that practices hard. So. I think the confidence you can come into the game, everybody understands uh, at hour two, nobody feels good. Um, but the group has confidence in their ability to push. On the right side here. Uh, Paul, in the beginning of the series, we always talk about you know teams trying to feel each other out. Uh, obviously, you had a lot of time in this game, but maybe you don't figure out a whole lot because of just the complete randomness and how long it went. What do you take away from a game like this? I liked our five-on-five -five game. Um, they were good. We were good based on what was given in the first. They were really good in the third. We fell. We will look at that as there's a whole bunch of things that we did that created that environment for them. Um, but the game in the third was the way they looked, have looked at times in their first two rounds. So we have to do things to keep them out of that rhythm. Um, and then we would be. Yeah, I mean, we, we generated some high-end looks there in the, in the, I can't remember how many periods we played, but after overtime periods, I, we'd be pretty happy about what, and if we gave something up, it wasn't out of a mental mistake, you know, the ice, as, as you would expect, this isn't a nice complaint, but you play that many periods of hockey over and over, the ice is going to get chewed up, right? So there's a bunch of that probably for both teams, but there's lots of good learning uh, examples, opportunities to learn for the way that game was played for us. Left side. It, w it was a long time ago, but we could have been out of here a lot earlier. I guess if that Lombard goal I would counted. have been open to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just the way you guys responded to that. That's, the key. Deployed, That's right? the key to it. Uh, there's, there's calls on the ice uh, that you don't like, and, and it can't take you out of the rhythm. I mean, the five on three would be a prime example of that. We didn't like that at all. Um, I didn't think you saw it in our game. I, I think when, when that goal, especially because you have the opportunity to celebrate, right? So there's this release and, and euphoria, and then you got to rein it right back in and get back to work. And I thought our guys did just an incredible job of that. There, there wasn't a, a change in the game. We didn't have to survive five minutes to kind of get our footing. I thought some really fine leadership there with that, with the players. Right side, second row. Paul, a couple of people after a couple of your players after the game talked about how much fun they sensed Bob was having yeah. during this game. A, do you sense that as a coach, and is it a little bit different? And B, how important in a game like this is your goalie being loosey goosey? Yeah, I don't think we can put Bob in the loosey goosey category, but there's clearly an enjoyment there for him. And part of it is, I think, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on your A players. So we'll put Barkov in the same category, right? In some ways, the pressure's off because he has performed, he has delivered, and now he can just go out and play. And I, th I think that's true. I don't know if you guys saw this, but in one of the overtimes, Sam Bennett fell down coming out to the ice, and two guys dragged him over the ice, and one guy was looking for a penalty. And the whole bench is laughing his ass off, right? I mean, it was funny as hell. That's where the fun is built. In. It's, it's they, they got a lot of good things going on in that room, and they can enjoy the moment without getting too caught up in the weight of it. 
And Sergey's part of that. Sometimes your goaltender's separate from your team, right? They, nobody talks to him because he does that weird goaltender stuff. Um, but he's, he's part of that group. He's part of the fun. And might be in some ways a driver of it because that's not his natural state. Right? He's a very intense man. So he has fun in the morning skates and that kind of everybody's relaxed. Well, Bob's good. You know, we can joke around with him a little bit. And then he's, he's just, I think he just enjoys the performance aspect of it. We'll take two more questions front right. Uh, Matthew Kachuk was just in here saying that you need to appreciate what both teams did in this game, the way they played and how well they played. Can you, and it's probably easier for you because you won the game, but can you appreciate the efforts and, and, and how well they did things, both teams, that this game ended the right. way? There, there, was, there were pieces of that game that both teams owned and looked exactly like they're supposed to look. The third period especially, they were very, very strong, so quick. They stretched us and they forechecked us at the same time, which is hard to do. And, uh, and and they're, I mean, they're stick skills. They knock so many pucks down out of the air where you think you've got something going and then it gets knocked down and it's going the other way on you. Their counter game is just fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. at some point you're wondering, uh, this is not a critique, it's a question. At, at some point you're wondering, how long can these men push this hard for without it becoming dangerous? I mean, they're... They get into this, locked into this rhythm, and and they they're at that point they're like thoroughbreds, right? But how long a racetrack can we keep for these guys? I wonder if there's a cutoff that you would need at some. It's, this is not a league complaint; they've never really got to. But we're getting fairly close to that threshold where nothing good happens after that for these men. Um, but I think both teams pushed hard, right? They'll take the confidence of that. But this is gonna. You know, we said we'd be smiling in game seven. We'll be able to say we're smiling in game eight now. Last question, back right. You obviously have great fans in Florida, and there are great fans here tonight in Raleigh. Given your history with the Canes, did you ever look up around you and be like, why are there this many people still left in this arena? And does it make you appreciate the They were fans? hanging in there, weren't they? And, and um the only thing that I thought was I'd really like to get back to 500 and triple over game. I thought it'd be happening in triple. You know, we lost one in triple overtime here. It still hurts. And uh, I thought maybe I had some karma saved up from that one. Thank you for your okay, time, guys. Coach.